Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing an amp and sub install on this 2018 Honda Civic. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to install that amp and sub to the factory audio sound system. Let's get started. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're going to need for our install. First and foremost are the amp and sub that the customer wants us to install. It's this budget-friendly Rockville 500 watts a 2 ohm amplifier. It's their DB12 series, and they're pairing it with this Boss Audio 12-inch DVC uh, 4 ohm sub. So it's going to be wired down to 2 ohms, um, as it's just a good match with this amp. Now to install this in the vehicle, because we are retaining the factory radio and factory audio sound system, whether you have the factory amplifier or not, we're going to need some sort of wiring kit and line-out converter. Now this can accommodate up to a 4 gauge amplifier wiring kit, and because we need to integrate with the factory audio sound system, we're going to need some sort of line-out converter. Uh, it's a high power uh, line-out converter, you can also get these with bass knobs too as well. So what we're going to do at this point of time is start prepping our amplifier install. We've chosen a location this is going to fit up underneath the driver's side front seat. To tap into the factory audio sound system, we happen to have the factory 6.5 inch speakers in the rear deck. Since they poke through the rear deck, we can access the wiring in the trunk so we can make our connections there. So at this point of time, let's head back to the car to start prepping our wiring install. All right, so one quick thing to note here, based on the trim level of your Civic, you may or may not have the factory amplified sound system. Now, in most instances, if you don't see a factory subwoofer in the trunk, um, then you don't necessarily have to worry about anything special. You can just hook up with a standard line-out converter like the one that we're using today. In most trim or platform of the coupe, or the sedan, not the hatchback, you're gonna have six and a half inch speakers in the rear deck, which you can tap into. If you happen to have the hatchback, like for example, the Type R, you may or may not have a factory sub there in the trunk boot area. And if you do, that's probably where you're gonna to wanna to tap into for signal. Otherwise, if you don't have six and a half inch speakers in the rear deck, um, they're most likely the rear speakers are gonna be located in the rear doors and you can access that wiring from the B pillars on both the passenger and driver side. So let's go ahead and open up the hood and get ready to run our power wire from the battery to the driver side front seat. Okay, so we're underneath the hood here. Battery is on the driver's side, kind of back corner of the engine bay. And we'll need to tap into the positive post there um, on the battery itself. Now, from that connection here, we're going to have to find some firewall access. In our case here today, we do have the manual transmission. So we have to be conscientious. It's a little bit more crowded on the firewall since there's going to be a clutch pedal. So we're going to find the factory wiring harness loom and prepare to pull wire through that factory boot. All right, so we started making preparations to pull wire through. Now, we have a little hanger poking through our factory grommet. And the way that we've done that is we went from the inside of the cabin up underneath the steering column found our main grommet, which has plenty of space. It's a large grommet to pass our wire hanger through, and we're gonna use this hanger to help fish our power wire through that boot safely. Now, we're gonna go underside to show you exactly where this pokes through, um, but we love using our little notorious hanger. Makes for pulling wire through a grommet boot extremely easy. Now, up underneath the steering column here, between our clutch pedal and our brake pedal, we actually have our factory rubber boot. And it is a super soft rubber type material, so we can easily pierce our wiring through that boot. And that's where we fished it through from the other side. Now, big warning here, be extremely careful of your factory wiring loom. You do not want to damage that in any way, so stay as far away from that through that boot as possible so we don't impact any of the factory wiring currently existing within that rubber grommet. So what we're gonna do is grab our power wire here. We're gonna tape it up to this end and get it all looped up so we can pull it from the engine bay all the way up through the firewall. All right, so what we've done here is we have wrapped our wire here with some electrical tape and now we're gonna get some soap and water to just really coat this. That's gonna allow it to easily pass through and not bind up whatsoever on that rubber boot. 
and allows you to pull your power wire through the firewall. Now we only need to pull just enough for us to install and add our inline fuse and have that uh, appropriate length that will go to the positive post on the battery. All right, so we pulled that on through here. As you can see, that's where it passed through the firewall. We've loomed our wire already, and we ran it here. Now we actually pulled the battery out for just the purpose of the video. Um, it should be able to come out without pulling the battery at all, um, but we pulled it out just so you have a good bird's eye view on what it looks like as that wire passes through the factory boot. So we split loom that wire. We have it all the way here, ready to go. Now um, we'll just quickly get the battery all back in for you. Um, but what we'll need to do next is build a, a fuse mount for our inline fuse and get everything connected to the terminal. At this point, we'll keep the negative off the battery as we're making the connections in the car just to be safe uh, so we can prevent any sort of electrical short circuits. All right, so under the hood, we went ahead and finished up, running our power wire, got everything back in here. Just ran that power wire up back behind the heat shield, created a little ABS fuse and a fuse mount there. Use that 10 millimeter bolt. Then it goes right up to the positive post on the battery. We'll make a little cut here so the, the door can still shut and um, enclose that terminal. Um, but it looks all nice and factory. We split loomed everything, got everything zip tied. Looks nice and clean, and that's nice and easily accessible in case we have to get to that fuse later on. So at this point in time, besides reconnecting the negative on the battery, which we'll do later once all our connections are made, so let's head inside the car and start preparing by pulling the seat back so we have space to start running our wiring to underneath the driver's side front seat. All right, so uh, with the seat laid back and our power wire kind of running in the area that we want it, next thing we need to do is just get our amplifier ready to go to be installed. Now, uh, we'd like to use these ABS plastic sheets. This is a 12 by 16. We're gonna grab one of the uh, seat bolts and that's gonna allow us to, to mount this kind of under the seat so it doesn't uh, move around. It's screwed to this piece of plastic here. And uh, we went ahead and got our terminals all done, except for power and ground, which we'll do that in the car. Uh, we got our speaker wire output. It's a remote turn on wire. We got wire fer ferrules on those as well. We'll do the same with our four gauge power and ground. Then on this side, we got our um, base knob wire as well as our uh, RC cables. And we zip tied all those along, got those good to go. Um, this is just gonna sneak through the, uh, the vent area access through the carpet um, up underneath the carpet there so that's why we kind of went there we're going to do this side and wait until we get our power and ground done so um, that allows us now to do a lot of the wiring here on the bench so we're going to run these rcas all the way actually to the trunk since we're tapping into both the rear left and right speakers that are in the deck lid uh, so we're going to run all the way back that's where we're going to mount our line out converter so these will have to go to the trunk same thing with our speaker or sub output wire that'll go with the RCAs all the way to the trunk. And then also with our remote turn on wire because the line out converter we're using is gonna generate a remote turn on wire for us. And so we're gonna run that there. We don't have to go to a fuse box or anything like that. Our base knob wire will just run up to underneath the dash kind of by the uh, knee buster area um, at the convenience of the customer. That's where we're gonna mount our base knob. Finally, we need to do a ground here and put a wire ferrule on, just like we do with all our wires here. And there's going to be a nice factory grounding location there on the seat rail support where it bolts into the, the unibody. Um, we're going to go to that factory ground. We're going to clean it up with some uh, a wire brush there before we put this in, but we're going to show you how we're going to do that.
All right, so we got our amplifier all seated. We're gonna snag that seat bolt there. And then it's kind of wedged in between the other one and the uh, screws tack the carpet so it's not going to slide around at all. Um, we hooked up our power and ground and you saw us tap that ground. That ground is just right there. Used a wire brush, cleaned up the paint and then added our ground with the rest of the ground. So it's a nice threaded stud. Then red threaded that through. Got our power and ground, same thing, put four gauge wire ferrules on there with some heat shrink. Everything is zip tied nice and clean. We uh, chose to put our terminals on this side so we can make adjustments to it while it's in the car. We fed our wires through here. So we have our RCAs, our sub output wire, and our remote turn on wire coming out here. And we taped it about every foot or so, maybe eight inches. And we're gonna run that along the kick panel all the way to the trunk area because um, we gotta go snag signal. signal remote turn on and then this is just our sub output connecting to the sub box going the other direction is our um, base knob and we're going to mount our base knob just kind of right up here so we'll work it up and around there as well so we got this all put back together here we just need to reassemble our kick panels but that turned out super nice and clean let's continue we'll fish this up underneath the b pillar panel here and uh, work our way towards the trunk All right, so we continued running our wire. We popped this on off, kind of like how we did the front. Now we sent our base wire just under the seat. That'll go to the lower trunk area. And then our RC is a remote tunnel wire. We just fed up here through the factory passage there. And it essentially goes right into the trunk. So we're gonna reassemble this here and head to the trunk to make our final connections. All right, so we're here in the truck. Now our subwoofer output speaker wire comes here we'll strip those and that'll connect to the terminals on the box for the rca remote terminal wire it comes through the factory access point there now we need to make basically a few connections here in the trunk four door sedan speakers rear speakers are in the rear deck and we got one here and one there and we're going to go to the positive and negative and positive and negative of those so we're going to pull both of those speaker signals, we're just going to tap into it. Just uh, do a little T-tap there, snag the signal. From the left and the right speaker for our line-out converter. Now our line-out converter also needs power and ground, and we're going to show you a little bit more about this on the bench. But we have power and ground in this harness here, as well as the factory ground right here. This just folds out of the way, the clips essentially here. They separate, there's two pieces, the outer part pops out, and the whole clip comes free. So we went ahead and pulled that out, out enough so we can have access to the ground, to our constant 12 volts, and then we can make our T-tap connections there at each speaker. So let's head to the bench and show you more about this line-out converter. All right, so here at the bench, this line-out converter, let's chat a little bit more about it. There's lots of different line-out converters on the market. This one is special because not only can it high, handle a high level uh, amplified power input, for example, if you have the factory amp or not. Um, it also provides a remote turn on wire if hooked up correctly. So you don't have to look around the vehicle for an accessory or remote turn on source if retaining the factory radio. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get this thing pulled apart. All right, so we got this thing pulled apart here. Now this thing is actually pretty cool. This is your output RCAs that go to your amplifier. And this end is your kind of harness and it actually unplugs if needed. And you have a few sets of wires that come off this end. Now your whites and your grays, those are gonna be your speaker input. It comes pre-terminated with some RCA cables, um, but obviously in our circumstance, we're gonna be using actually simply the high level input functionality here. So all we do is cut those RCA ends off and it's gonna leave us these bare wires, which we'll strip back. So these are our speaker wire inputs. White's gonna tap into the left side, left speaker in the rear deck. Gray's gonna tap into the right side. Now you're left with these other four wires. In order for the remote turn on to generate automatically for us, as soon as it senses either a DC offset or audio over the factory sound system, in order for this to work, we need to hook up a power and ground. So yellow is a constant 12 volt. Generally, you want this on um, all the time or on battery power. 
because whenever the factory radio turns on, it needs to be ready to go to turn on as well. And then obviously it needs a ground. So we need constant 12 volts and a ground there. This will hook out to the remote turn on wire that we've run all the way back, which leads obviously to the remote input on our amplifier. And then this brown guy is generally an audio ground. If you have some ground loop issues or buzzing in the speakers, you only need to hook this up if you're having audio quality issues. And uh, that's usually generated from a poor ground on the amplifier or poor quality RCA. So in most circumstances, as long as you have good equipment and a good ground, this won't be needed. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna strip both these ends here. These wires are a little short. We wanna access both the left and the right speaker. So we're gonna extend these wires just a little bit longer. Um, so, so it has enough to reach both speakers. Uh, this will tap into that blue wire that we ran all the way back and we're going to show you how to connect those power and ground wires once we're in the car. So let's make these a little bit longer here then we'll head to the car to start making our connections. Right. So here's our line out converter. We extended our whites and our grays. We just had some more of the same color with stripes too as well. Um, nice and long here. We'll cut them to length once we're in the car. We extended our ground and put a ring terminal on. We're gonna snag that factory ground there on the trunk. Um, and everything's heat shrunk and soldered. And then this will be nice and short. This is gonna go right to that constant 12 volts that we found in the trunk and brown's not used. So we're gonna use a little bit of Tessa tape here. We're gonna loom our harness and let's head to the car and make our final connections. All right, so let's show you all these connections we made with our line out converter. So starting with our line out converter here, red yellow wire goes right into this corner pin harness and we strip the wire back without breaking it and solder it on our wire there. Now we're gonna tape up that connection so it's nice and insulated, but that's constant 12 volts. Ground, as we put that ring terminal, it went right to that ground and zip tied it up this loom there. So we got a factory ground right there, nice and clean. Blue wire, which is the output from this guy for a remote turn on, we soldered on that lead that goes all the way to the amplifier to the remote turn on we'll move our heat shrink up and over that connection when we're ready and then our speaker wire we loomed ran it all the way down left side's white positive is going to be blue negative is this gray so we hook that in there as you can see there same technique strip the wire back without breaking it now you can do one of the two wires here there's two sets going into this harness but um, there it's the same it's just a double set going in when we strip the wire back, we use a little pick tool and basically threaded our wire through the original factory copper strands. Then we soldered on there. Again, we're going to have to reloom that with some electrical tape. And then the right side comes over. We still got to zip tie that on up. But the same principle here. Positive is yellow. Negative is brown. You can choose one of the two wires. It doesn't matter. It's both the same. Soldered on there as well. So those are our connections. Now we'll get out the electrical tape, insulate those connections and reloom it in some Tessa tape, both sides here. And we're gonna zip tie everything up so it's all nice and clean. Got it all zip tied up and out of the way. And the other one all done too. Got all our connections done here. Got our lineup converter just mounted there on the trunk wall. Hooked our RCAs into our lineup converter and just zip tied the rest there. So this will pull back up out of the way and we'll put the clips in. All we have to do is now hook up our sub and our trunk. All right, all reassembled there, nice and clean. Besides getting the sub in, let's go ahead and set our gains with an SMD DD1. With all our connections made, now we can hook the negative up back to the battery, which we've done here, got everything tightened down. We're done underneath the hood. All right, so we got everything all tuned. We got our gain set with an SMD DD1 there. Everything is zip tied and cleaned up here up underneath the seat. Well, that's about it for this install here today. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. We'll link all the parts that we used along with all the parts we recommend for your Civic at home. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe to post great content on the channel all the time and we'll see you in the next video.